welcome everyone to this historic announcement for uh, nanotechnology industry in the state of New Mexico. Uh, my name is uh, Manny Tupanares and I want to introduce you to the Master of Ceremonies for today's announcement, founder and chairman, Emeritus of Manhattan Scientific's Marvin Maslow. Thank you, Manny. Thank you everyone for being here today. Today we're celebrating a, a journey that began after the Berlin Wall fell in 1989. And uh, the story, the way I like to tell it, is uh, not scripted here, but it's uh, back in uh, uh, at the end of World War II, uh, the United States uh, took control of Werner von Braun and the German rocket scientist group and uh, brought them to the United States, and that became the basis of the American uh, space program. Well, 17 years ago, <coughs> Gorbachev resigned from the, as a, as a uh, as the uh, premier of the Soviet Union, and the Soviet Union slipped into history. There was no more Soviet Union. And the United States did again what they did after World War II. Uh, through the uh, uh, Department of Energy and the Nonproliferation Group and the Los Alamos Laboratory, hundreds of Russian scientists that were previously working uh, in, uh, in the nuclear arms business were employed by us for peace peaceful purposes and to basically to avoid them building nukes for Saddam and Saddam-like characters. And so um, uh, part of their development, and maybe their most significant development, was this nanostructured, super hard, super light ability to produce super hard, super light metals. And they were trying to build Soviet tanks that would normally have uh, armor, armor plate, you know, this thick on it, and they could make it this thick because of the super hard, super light metal. Or have airplanes that have much a much greater uh, flying range and, and were very light. Well, we own all of that now, the Los Alamos lab does, and that has been licensed to Metallicum and now through Metallicum, the Metallicum division of Manhattan Scientifics. And uh, our, our plan here is to, is to commercialize uh, this very, very important uh, new development and to commercialize it here in New Mexico. Uh, and, and that's our goal. Let me just uh, congratulate uh, Terry Lowe, uh, Metallicum, and uh, Marvin Maslow, and all the others who are uh, instrumental in making this happen. This is a, uh, a great occasion. Uh, I, was, I first became acquainted with uh, Marvin and, and became aware of Manhattan Scientifics when uh, several years ago, I think 1998 maybe, when, uh, when uh, Manhattan Scientifics acquired uh, some work that Bob Hockaday was doing on fuel cells up at Los Alamos. And, and that was a spinoff from Los Alamos, just as much of the work here is a spinoff from uh, work done at Los Alamos. Uh, this is an example where government-funded research is in fact uh, turning into jobs in the private sector, and that is, is very encouraging. It's, it's turning into real benefits for the civilian sector as well. Uh, Los Alamos and Sandia have always had tremendous capabilities in the, res in the research area. There's always been frustration, I, I know in the laboratories themselves, but also in New Mexico, that we haven't done as good a job as we could to get that technology out and usable and creating jobs in our own state. So, this is an example where that's uh, occurring, and it's very, uh, uh, it's very good for me to, to just see it happen here, and particularly to hear about the connection that this has to the, to the uh, interface that we established uh, many years ago with Russian scientists. I think that Today's historic announcement would not have been possible without the work of one man, Dr. Terry Lowe, co-inventor of the nanostructured metals, metals process. First of all, I, I do want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity to share something uh, with New Mexico and with the country and actually, quite frankly, with the world, uh, to take something that has been a, a collaboration uh, between scientists at Los Alamos National Laboratory and scientists and technologists in uh, Russia as well. So Marvin, thank you for helping make this possible because I have to say Marvin provided the extra juice to get us to uh, this particular phase. So I'm the science techie guy here for a moment, and I, I see I know exactly what uh, I want to share in a way that is simple for us all to understand. And so an example, just to make a reference, is to a beverage can or a soda can, which 
whether you know it or not, is of course aluminum in most cases, but in particular composed of millions of little crystals. In fact, all commercial metals are pretty much composed of millions of little crystals, or what we call grains. And so, in any case, what the nanostructuring does is it basically shrinks the size of those crystals, not by a little bit, by about a factor of 500 to 1,000. And what happens as the size of the crystals shrinks is the metals get stronger. And that's, and that's true of all metals. But in this case, something else happens as well. We start to change the internal boundaries, and they get stronger as well, and they impart other properties to the material. So when I say get stronger, 30% stronger, twice as strong, and in some cases, four times as strong as a conventional counterpart. So having stronger metals means you can use the same materials you are now, but use a lot less of them. So that means you can make things lighter, lots of things lighter. And, and now, nanotechnology uh, has been the buzzword, Terry, as we know, for quite a while in the scientific field. Now we are seeing years of research produce real, practical, tangible results. We will soon be seeing this facility pr produce titanium and other metals that have been structurally changed through nanotechnology. This makes them stronger metals, it makes them better metals, uh, and as I've learned from Marvin, he tells me that you can take an airliner or a ship or anything else uh, and make it much lighter, which, it, which is something that uh, uh, we need to do a lot more of today since it, it uses a great deal of energy to move things. Um, we see these metals used in our buildings, uh, in our cars, in our planes, in our homes, and we also see them used in the medical field, in, in prosthetic devices and elsewhere. And I want to, I want to say that um, the bottom line for Governor Richardson and I is that this is a New Mexico company. Uh, Terry took the oath and said it was going to stay here and it's going to continue to be a New Mexico <laughs> company. Um, it goes both ways, yes. the, it's going to be manufactured here, and we hope it's going to be uh, full of New Mexicans. And our commitment to you is not only to continue to grow the jobs that, that New Mexico needs, but to grow the workforce that will be, we hope, manufacturing these products to improve the world for years to come. We are believers in growing the economy, growing green jobs, much like you, Marvin, and we thank you for your commitment to that. So I'm here. And I want to specifically point out how this technology will uh, positively affect uh, our national energy situation. If we can make things lighter, whether it's an automobile, an airplane, uh, we can move it much more cheaply. And that's uh, one of the keys that Senator Bingaman uh, and I are always working on. Uh, he's the chairman of the committee uh, in, in the United States Senate. I serve on the uh, Energy and Natural Resources Committee in the House, and we're always looking for uh, ways to save families money and this is this is something that I think uh, could make an, an, an enormous enormous difference um, in in conclusion I just want to say that I'm very proud to be here today uh, it's always wonderful to see how the beginning of a scientific dream can evolve into the jobs of the future even more important we are seeing how it can be directed towards addressing our national security, primarily our energy crunch, in a productive, forward-thinking way. I will continue to work strongly to ensure that companies like Metallicom are able to grow and thrive in our state and that our national labs not only continue their core mission, but diversify into all areas of national security research, including the development of alternative energy and energy independence technology like nano-titanium. Thank you again in the coming years. We will continue to point to today, I believe, as a great example of our ability as a country to take science and turn it into progress for the future, both for our economy and for our security. So wonderful to be here with you today, and, and thank you so much for all the hard work that you're doing.